So I haven't managed to watch every single one of the shorts because unfortunately, unlike in previous years, I haven't managed to go to the cinema and see them back to back to back. However, uh, these are going to be my reviews and predictions for the Oscar nominated shorts. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina, and usually I make bookish content here on this channel at least twice a week, and then movie reviews reserved for the weekend, but it's Oscars week, so we're going all in this week. I will leave my Oscars week playlist linked up above because it will have my other category videos in there, as well as some standalone reviews I have for a lot of the um, nominated pictures that I made reviews for before they were even nominated. Whoa, exciting. Um, so today we're gonna to be talking animated shorts, live action shorts and documentary shorts. As I say, normally I would be lucky enough to get to see these. I normally end up seeing the animated and live action at the Mayan Theatre here in Denver and then the documentary shorts at the C Film Centre. It just seems to be the way they split it up. And these were playing at my local AMC, but didn't feel ready to go to the cinema again at that point. So let's jump into the animated. I have watched four out of five of these. We have Burrow, which is one of the uh, Pixar um, dot things. They've been nominated for um, animated short before. It's a little bunny trying to uh, build his burrow underground, but each time he does it, he sees another animal's burrow and wants to add more stuff onto it. So his plans keep changing and he feels like he can't have this very like simple little burrow underground but then, you know, heartwarming things happen. It's a very cute short. It's a very Disney style short. Um, and I think it's good for an age where, you know, we put things on social media and on the internet and we have to be uh, conscious of the fact that, you know, not everything you see on the internet is the, the whole story. Um, and then we have, if anything happens, I love you, which is a very kind of like simplistic animation. Each of these animation, the animations the style is so very different obviously our like disney pixar one is very disney pixar style um if anything happens i love you is entirely in black and white there is um no dialogue basically um and we just have these two parents who bring this child into the world and then we um have a school shooting um and it's not that we see this school shooting it's very much to do with the feelings of these three characters the the mum and dad and the child um and it's really heartbreaking it's on netflix it's very short there's no dialogue um it's just yeah i often come out of having watched these shorts just feeling very like down and despondent about the same the sake of the state of the world and this year is just no different even though i've watched them at home uh then we have opera which is a i don't even know how to describe it it's very conceptual um it just i only was just able to find it on youtube actually i um had trouble finding this one at all so i was literally just able to find it this morning um yeah again it says quite a bit about the state of the world there's no dialogue there's just music, it's very short. And yeah, I just am kind of without words for that one, which isn't good considering the fact this meant to be a review video. Uh, and then we have Yes People, which is interesting. Um, I did just look at where this one's from. This one's from Iceland. And so it's interesting because um, although there is dialogue, the dialogue is just many different versions of the word yes, yeah, uh-huh, yes. Um, which sound different in Icelandic. Um, and the animation style is very kind of like Wallace and Gromit. It's that kind of stop motion, claymation type of thing. Um, and it was quite funny and quite amusing. And again, it kind of like gives you the whole thing of like, we don't always know what's going on behind closed doors. Um, it's an interesting choice for being nominated in the shorts category because it was you know, it, it wasn't all doom and gloom. It was quite funny and there was some love in there and some nice relationships and some neighborly stuff. And so, yeah, for, <laughs> for being nominated as shorts and 
the rest of them all making me feel super depressed. Yes, people didn't make me feel super depressed. I think my prediction in this category, even though I haven't seen Genius Loki or Loki, however you pronounce it, um, would be if anything happens, I love you. Um, I could definitely see that one taking home the Oscar, but then sort of Disney and Pixar do have a history of picking up the award in this category. So who knows, it could be that one. Um, but yes, let's move on to the documentary shorts. I really do enjoy the documentary shorts, even though they all do make me feel incredibly depressed most of the time. Um, I wasn't able to watch Hunger Ward, which um, look having looked at other people's reviews, it's uh, pretty much probably going to be the most depressing <laughs> of them all. So I'm okay with that one. Um, that one is from a previous, um, documentary short winner and so it could be a good choice for being a prediction um it focuses on a um like children's ward in yemen where children are starving to death um and that's all i need to know i don't need to watch that right this second thank you um then we have do not split which is like a, a combination of usa and norway and this is about the riots in hong kong um it's very chaotic it was really quite difficult to watch not only because of the horrible things that were happening but also because it's very very chaotic um it's one of the shorts that's on the longer end it's a 35 minute one um and so i did end up kind of watching it in two parts because it was a, so tough to watch because of the content and then B, quite chaotic. I felt like I needed a break from it even just after like 15 minutes of watching it. So um, that one is real kind of courageous filmmaking because obviously they're filming in an, an actively violent situation. Um, but it's also quite interesting because I feel like we got to see a little bit more than was portrayed by kind of news outlets and media outlets because it's somebody actually filming in amongst um, obviously it's very biased towards one side, but then I feel like the media is often biased against protests like this. And so it was interesting to watch to see that side of it. Then we have Colette, which is, um, again, it's like France, Germany, USA. It's not one country, which is interesting, which follows Colette going back to a concentration camp, um, where her brother was i don't think she was there as well if i've got this correctly um but yeah her brother was there and i think he died there and so she has never gone and done the tours that a lot of the um, survivors have um and this is her going back with just um one other person and being very kind of like quiet and considered um, and there's even a moment in the film where they're having a big dinner for her having done this very courageous thing and she's like okay that's enough talking now I can't I can't handle anymore she like really doesn't want the fuss she wants to just go and be reflective and do it in her own way which I think is an interesting take on it um it's definitely somber in mood but it's not completely depressing and obviously we um we, we like the fact that, you know, Colette is a survivor. And so it was interesting watching her doing this on her own terms. Definitely, um, yeah, more somber than just entirely depressing. Then we have a love song for Latasha, which is on Netflix as well. And this was her, um, the story of Latasha who was shot over a bottle of orange juice whilst holding the two dollars to pay for that orange juice in uh, 1991 in LA and was one of the kind of sparks that led to the um, riots in LA in 1992. It's interesting because again it's it's quite sort of not chaotic in the same way as Do Not Split is, but it's very much like we have little snippets of information. So we have a, a sort of talking head from a cousin and a talking head from um, other family members and friends. And we have voiceovers where we see shots of people and voiceovers where we see kind of like headlines and things like that. And so it's very, very much like sort of pieced together. The editing is quite, quite um, I don't know, like, rustic or sort of rough and ready um which was interesting i um knew nothing about it going into this i did not know that it was you know one of the big sparks that led to the 1992 riots um and it then has um the list of um a lot of the people who have been 
shot recently, um, partially, obviously. Um, all the stuff that's been in the headlines recently as well. And so it's very timely um, and I could definitely see this one taking home the Oscar. I think probably because I haven't watched Hunger Ward, this one would be my prediction and you know you can go away and watch it on netflix it's it's only um 19 minutes long and so whilst it is tough to watch it's not one that i had to kind of stop and come back to because it was a short shot um and then we have a concerto is a conversation which also deals with the um subject of race and it is the composer who was part of the team for green book i believe he did the um score for Green Book, which obviously won Best Picture. Um, but it's him in conversation with, now I think it's his grandfather. I wasn't sure at first whether it was his father or his grandfather. The familial relationship is never explained, but it's basically a conversation between the two of them whilst his piece of music based on that conversation plays. And we get to see the kind of opening night of it at the the big, like Disney concert hall in LA um, and it's you know he's in conversation with what I think is his grandfather and his grandfather's talking about um, growing up as the son of someone who was um, kept in slavery and how he kind of you know made his way out of that life and took whatever transport he could get whatever direction it was going and ended up eventually in um, Los Angeles and how they um, he used to communicate with people and apply for things and request things via letter so that they wouldn't see the colour of his skin because he applied for a job via letter and also applied for a job in person and um, they he said that you know the the fact that they sort of went against him because of the color of his skin they did it very overtly in the south where he was from and they did it very covertly once he got to california and it was the conversation between them about that and the conversation about um you know his concerto debuting and how he was a black artist and he hadn't ever seen this coming and that was again it was there was definitely not great things about that one but um i really enjoyed it and i would it's something that i would sort of watch again or watch with someone else again because i thought it was an interesting conversation and then the fact that the piece of music is inspired by these con this conversation as well um so yeah my prediction would be a love song for latasha and i i mean i i enjoyed watching all of them because i felt like i learned something from all of them but yeah they were definitely all of them fairly difficult watches um, and I'm quite glad in a way that I didn't watch some of them on the big screen um, however we're now moving on to the live action shorts which again I have seen four out of the five um, the one that I wasn't able to see was white eye and I don't seem to be able to find an awful lot about this online so I don't know if there's you know a reason behind the fact that I haven't been able to find it to watch I don't know then we have Two Distant Strangers, which was absolutely horrible to watch. It was um, really, really just, yeah, not nice. This guy wakes up after having had a, you know, one night stand. He's hooked up with a girl. He's in her apartment. He leaves her apartment, lights up a cigarette. A cop comes and says, you know, what's that? That smells like a funny cigarette. Why have you got this money? Let me search your backpack. When he's like, you know, you've no right to search my backpack basically choke holds him until he passes out as the guy dies he then wakes up and we've got a groundhog day situation and basically it's a groundhog day situation where every day he gets killed by this cop in some way or another sometimes it's the cop on his own sometimes there are other cops involved sometimes it's a you know a long drawn out process sometimes it's instantaneous sometimes the cop comes up to the apartment it's it's this groundhog day effect of of all of this and it was just really horrible to watch and it's just like well this person again just because he's black is going to die at the hands of the police no matter what and again it has some um information at the end about the fact that in 2020 there was only eight days where 
no, <laughs> nobody was killed at the hands of the police in this country. Um, and yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't nice to watch, but it was an interesting way of showing that story. So the filmmaking itself was good. Um, and then we have The Present, which is set in Palestine. And so we see a father wake up on the morning of his wedding anniversary and has to go to the other side. So he has to cross the border. Um, because he wants to go and get a present for his wife he takes his daughter with him the guards at the border detain him the guards at the border make life very difficult for him it's just again it's horrible to watch because it's him there and his daughter and his daughter is having to go through this and his daughter is having to witness this and just go through things that children should not have to go through and people should not be treated this way no matter where they are or who they are or how old they are um and yeah it was it was heartwarming in parts because of this love that this man has for his wife and his child but then other parts of it were just like this is this is not nice this is inhumane and it's but again it's a good filmmaking because it shows us this that we see as part of news headlines but in a different way and in a much more personal way then we have The Letter Room, which stars Oscar Isaac. Um, and this one I found by doing a week's free trial of Topic via Amazon Prime. It's a funny one. A lot of these I've just been able to watch on YouTube, which I am entirely grateful for. Um, but this one definitely had a more sort of bittersweet edge to it rather than just being downright depressing and, you know, uh, just a commentary on the state of the world so oscar isaac gets a job working um reading the letters checking for security issues in a prison and um we have kind of the fallout from all that i'm not going to spoil it for you i know a lot of these it's hard because it's just such a short film to not spoil them um but yeah this one had some like real heartfelt moments and the kind of like the people behind the letters both writing the letters and the prisoners receiving the letters. And it's interesting because you know that that happens, but you don't think about there being one person that has that job and it's their job to scan and read the letters and check the letters and end up having that bit of a personal connection with the prisoners because of having read the letters. Um, so yeah, I thought that it was good. It was quite sort of quiet and slow. It's a 33 minute film. So it's similar to watching, you know, a, an episode of a, a limited series or something like that. Um, and yeah, it's sort of an interesting take on humanity, if you will. And then we have Feeling Through, which was probably my um, favourite of the bunch. Um, just because again, it wasn't entirely depressing, but I just really liked this one. And again, it's a lot to do with humanity, but also a bit of social commentary. So we have a, um, a guy on the streets of New York who we, it's never overtly said, but we sort of assume that he is between places right now. So he's not homeless, homeless. He's just been couch surfing a little bit and he's struggling with the fact that he doesn't really have somewhere to sleep that night so you know he does quite a lot of second looks at the other people he seems he sees sleeping on the streets or begging for money um and he meets um this guy that's holding up a card saying i'm deaf and blind can you tap me if you can help me and this guy basically just wants to get on the correct bus to get home and so um our first guy who's called oh he's called Tariq I don't think we find out the other guy's name uh no he's called Artie that's absolutely incorrect he is called Artie I remember now so um yeah Tariq takes him to the bus stop and you know they work out a form of communication uh the guy who is deaf and blind writes things in a notebook and Tariq does um kind of like spelling on his hand and some tapping and things like that um and you know, it sees him helping him and he wants him to buy a, a drink for him at a bodega and so they do that and we see Tariq take some money from his wallet and it's that, well, where do we draw the line at what's wrong and what's right here because we know for a fact that Tariq hasn't got any money and hasn't got anywhere to stay. Um, and it's just, 
it was i really enjoyed this one i enjoyed seeing their relationship change even though they're from two completely different worlds they both have their difficulties they're both facing their issues right now but together they came together and made something happen um and i just i like the way they found a way to communicate with one another and um just the kind of the relationship that Tariq builds with Artie over the course of what is only 19 minutes. I really did enjoy it. Um, in terms of what I would pick as the winner, I mean, I really don't know. It's a bit like when I reviewed the documentaries, they're all quite hard to compare. Um, and they're all so different whilst tackling such big issues. Um, I, I don't know if, I mean, I could see Two Distant Strangers definitely being um, picked by the Academy. I could see The Present being picked by the Academy. I personally really enjoyed Feeling Through. It was my, my favourite out of all of them. Um, yeah, I'm a bit stumped for a prediction for that one. Let me know in comments if you have seen any of these and also let me know what you think is going to win Best Picture this year. I will be back with more Oscars content for you, including my own Best Picture video soon, so make sure you are subscribed. I will leave that Oscars Week playlist in this end screen for you, as well as another Oscars video. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you with my next video soon.